generally a bottom, and I've seen this movie so many times before, is you need a big institution to go bankrupt. That always helps. I mean, you have to sacrifice an institution to get this to work because then you get a dramatic flushing of equity positions as panic sets in, margin calls are called in, shorts, you know, uh, are bought, they basically bought themselves in already. And then you get this big leg down, usually it's five to 10%. And that is the bottoming process we need. Now, this time I was thinking it might be in, a, in the crypto space, right. but that's already been decimated. And so it may be something else, a financial services company, or, you know, there was some rumors about Coinbase that, that it turned out not to be true, but you, you need, somebody's offside somewhere on a leveraged hedge position. You just don't know who it is yet. And they're big. And we're going to wake up in the next 10 days, 20 days, and you're going to find out there are zero. That's a good thing. And I'm waiting for that to happen because we're, we're getting close to a bottom here. Kevin O'Leary warned investors before this crisis happened that the markets wouldn't bottom until a major player goes insolvent and blows up. Lo and behold, O'Leary predicted it completely, however the blow up came from an extremely unexpected source with the second largest crypto exchange FTX going under which Shark Tank star Mr. Wonderful was not only an investor in but also a paid spokesperson for. It's not all doom and gloom however, as O'Leary points out that events like this are generally what marks the bottom of bear markets and allows for bad players to be flushed out before the next bull run. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where O'Leary speaks on how crypto is behaving exactly like the early days of Amazon with huge fluctuations in price and sickening price drops. O'Leary argues if you can't stomach the volatility, you don't deserve the outperformance. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Any feeling as to what company it could be, Kevin? What sector? It usually happens in financial services where somebody was trying some strategy, a leverage strategy. It's always leverage that does this or, or a hedge fund. Hedge funds, a good hedge fund that loses 10 or 20 billion. That's also good for flushing. And that's happened many times before. These are guys that have never seen this kind of a market. So they set up a position that went awry, couldn't unwind their, their, their leverage and they just get wiped out. And again, you know, I, I feel sorry for them, but I think it's very healthy when that happens. And the trouble with this correction is it's a slow grind down one to 3% a day. And you don't really bottom till you get that flush. The Las Vegas side of crypto has had a, a nightmarish correction. And I think that's very good in the sense that it helps separate the wheat from the chaff or the cream from the milk, if you wish, whatever analogy you want, because the traditional projects have remained relatively stable. Sure, they've had a correction, but it's not uncommon each year for Bitcoin to give up 50% of its value. And that's certainly been the case here. Ethereum, same thing. And so that's the, that's the volatility that will be inherent in crypto until there's policy. I remain bullish on, on crypto from, from the perspective of, of productivity. And so I think you're buying projects, and I've always said this, Bitcoin's not a coin, it's software. Ethereum software, Solana software, Helium software, Pollen is software. All of these different projects around different sectors of the economy. Solana may be better ultimately for transactional speed because Ethereum is pretty slow. So we don't know which one of these projects is going to win. Right. But the whole premise is that you want these for financial services. And I still believe that in 10 years, crypto will be the 12th sector of the economy, but all the existing tokens will not exist. There'll be many that just go to zero because they were highly speculative. They were fun. They, they had no real intrinsic financial services value. But if you were to ask me about USDC and say, look, where's the value of that? Well, first of all, you can stake it or loan it at a 4% rolling uh, annualized yield every 30 days, and that's valuable in inflationary times. Secondly, it is a highly effective payment system because I am now accepting payment for goods and services in USDC, and very often not converting it back to fiat because I'm simply leaving it in my circle account and rolling it into these 30-day contracts. In fact, I had a really interesting dialogue with one of my banks last week, and I plan on reading the script at the next crypto conference because it's quite interesting. It really says a lot about the banking system right now. I cannot buy more than a 3% weighting in any mandate of USDC because my, my regulator or my, my compliance department, I should say, treats it as a highly volatile equity as mm -hmm. evidenced by what happened to Luna, what happened to you. 
UST. So they're looking at that, not differentiating the difference between those two tokens. They're saying, look, you can put on a 3% weighting. So in, in the case of that particular mandate, that was $7 million. So we moved the 7 million out of the, out of the account into a USDC account. And within hours, I got a phone call from the bank saying, what happened to that 7 million? Why didn't we get a chance to bid on it? I said, okay, bid on it. Right now I'm staking it out at 4% for 30 days. They came back, gave me double B corporate credits for three years at 3%. And I said, why would I ever do that? You're not competitive. You've got to meet me at 30 days for 4%. And then they sent me all the articles about the correction of Luna. And I said, Luna is not USDC. These banks are now finding them getting themselves getting squeezed because people are figuring out they're not advancing enough into understanding how crypto works. And their clients, I'm just one client, are moving millions of dollars out of their account elsewhere. And I said to them, look, you can bid for this money anytime you want but you have nothing of value to me if I have to pay a hundred basis and get hundred basis points less and tie up my money for three years and a double B corporate credit. You're not even competitive. You're not, you're not even near what I can get. So there you have it. Kevin, just, uh, just the final point, if we could just focus in on, on Bitcoin uh, for a minute or two. You know, there's talk that with some technical analysts calling that, hey, even more pains in score for Bitcoin, that it could possibly head down to 12,000. What do you make when you hear these numbers thrown around? Do you think that this crypto winter will be a long one or any sentiment as to where the market will head now? The forecasts of Bitcoin have never been accurate. No one's been able to forecast its volatility. And, you know, the, the speculation that it was going to be a hedge against inflation was just flat out wrong. Um, and that didn't work. And maybe it will work one day. But I'd argue that the volatility on Bitcoin is going to remain very akin to what Amazon was for its first 15 years, 30 to 50 percent corrections every 12 months, because there was no institutional support in the early days of Amazon. It was a retail product as people started to use the service, bought the stock. That's the same right now for Bitcoin. Uh, there is no, you know, people talk about institutions owning it. That's just not true. They don't own any of it and they won't until the SEC rules on it. Uh, there is some institutional ownership in the Canadian market by Canadian institutions because they can use the ETF and equity mandates, but that's Canada. They were the first to allow an ETF with Bitcoin as the underlying. They also allowed an Ethereum ETF. And so those are positioned, but they're inside of equity mandates, the actual ownership a Bitcoin itself remains elusive to the institution because of their own compliance departments. And on top of that, no infrastructure for compliance. There's no way to mark to market into any of the systems, the price of Bitcoin or whether it's levered or not during the day, the way you can with stocks that have been treated that way for decades. So there's so much work to be done. That's not what's going to happen first. I think what's going to happen first is we're going to see policy on stable coins and both the Haggerty bill and the Toomey bill are very clear about what they want in the regulatory environment on stable coins. They want a 30 day audit in both cases, and they want all the underlying assets to have duration of less than 12 months. And that makes sense to me. And I think once they put that law into place, which is an easier bill to pass after the midterms, nothing's going to happen until after the midterms. Biden is not interested in discussing crypto when his poll ratings are, you know, whatever it is, sub 31%. That's not a place he wants to go. So you're going to have to wait till after the mid. Well, that was 10% of pre-decline for, for Biden. I mean, the party that would you think would want to champion this, the same discussion was around decriminalizing or getting uh, cannabis off the Schedule One narcotics list. The chance that happens, zero. These are not issues that when you're declining in the polls, you become a champion of that. That doesn't help you. And so, you know, the market's correcting. Biden's facing, you know, close to double digit inflation. People are getting gas at, at the pump going into the driving season at, at unheard of prices the last 20 years. The price of protein is up 20 to 40 percent. He's not sitting around worrying about crypto. So you got to think that through in terms of policy. So nothing's really going to happen. Plus, you've got a lot of different proposals coming out of the SEC around climate change and crypto and Bitcoin mining and, and right. you know, all that stuff. So it's a very volatile situation.